1,400 competitors, 63 countries, yes. four days of incredible competition. Oh, that's that's gone, it's, it's come and gone, but what a world championships we were treated to this year. South Korea played host to the single largest competition in the history of speed cubing, featuring some of the best solvers the hobby has ever seen. All the excitement and hype we've been sowing over the last several months finally bore fruit in some juicy records and crisp solves. Easily one of the most competitive competitions of all time with some incredible storylines to unpack. If you somehow managed to live under a rock, fear not. Cubers Live has you covered with the best moments from the best worlds of all time. Once again, I'm Manu and you're watching Speed Cubing Top 10. Starting off with Megamix at number 10, let's shine a spotlight on one of several records from Worlds, Alexander Vuzic's Oceanic Record Single and Average. Alexander has been on a bit of a run recently, breaking his own OCR Single and Average three times each in the last year. His average here was a little up and down, starting with a 28th and 31, before popping off with a 26.00 single on his third. He really needed to clutch up after getting a 33 on his fourth solve but managed to grab third place on the podium behind the world record holder Leandro Martin Lopez, knocking US national champion Nicholas Nyang to fourth. Square One has been a very interesting event in the last several months, and Worlds capped off an incredible summer with an all-American podium. Let's start with the bronze medalist, Hassan Kanani, who was a bit behind the pace, starting off with a 7.60, but ended up getting a 4.97 on solve 3 and finished with a strong 6.26 on route to a devilishly fast 6.66 average. Daniel Carnock, the derpy cuber himself, joined an exclusive club of just 14 people to ever podium at 3 or more consecutive world champs in the same event with a solid 6.06 second average, good enough for second place. And the gold medalist, Samir Agarwal, was flying through finals, guaranteeing himself a sub-6 average after just solve 4. With a 5.40 average to win Worlds, the US national champion really separated himself from the rest of the field. At number 8, we were treated to a fantastic OH final with a bit of a surprise finish. For the first time in 6 whole years, the world record single holder Max Park failed to make a podium in OH, and Patrick Ponce, the WR average holder, narrowly missed third by one hundredth of a second to his compatriot Luke Garrett. Juliet Sebastian, the current female world record holder, clutched up with an 865 on her final solve to earn her the silver medal, and Sean Patrick Villanueva of the Philippines showed off his brew skills as he won the whole thing with a lightning fast 942 average. A rare non-finals highlight, but we just had to mention the twin continental records in the second round of 5x5. Perhaps the greatest speedcuber of all time showed us that he's still the top dog when it comes to big cubes down under. That's right, we're talking about Felix Semdegs, who broke 42 seconds for the first time with a 41.81 average of 5. While Felix didn't podium for the first time since 2011, he'll be bringing OCR number 212 back to Australia. Timon has been practicing hard, and it really showed at this Worlds. The defending Pyramix World Champion actually skipped the event altogether, supposedly to focus on 5x5, and it paid off in a big way. He set a new European record of 38.80, almost 4 seconds of the good over his nearest competitor Kiaran from Ireland, and placing him in the first seed going into 5x5 finals. Very happy of that solve. Back to Timon and Big Cubes, but this time the even layered puzzles. The pole struck gold in both 4x4 and 6x6, bending off valiant charges from the world record holder Max Park and fellow European competitor Kiaran Bihan. A chance to grab the 4x4 ER average and complete the Infinity Gauntlet just slipped by, but he'll be happy with two golds to go along with the three other medals that he earned. Speaking of which, Timon managed to podium in every event he entered at Worlds. That has to be some kind of achievement, right? Number 5 is sticking with the big cubes, as Max Park pulled out an incredibly clutch average to come out victorious over an incredibly competitive field of world-class solvers. Timon came out swings with several low 40s and even a 37.63 to seal a 40.36 average. 
Max, on the other hand, was a little sluggish, starting off with a 45 and 42. Not a great start when chasing 4036. Max then got this 3643 to put himself back in it, and with a 38 needed to win, Max completed the comeback and claimed the second of four podiums at this world. An incredible storyline that can only be forged in the pressure of a world championships. Clutch wow. final. From clutch to clutch, number four belongs to one of our favorite cubers, Tommy Cherry. The 11-time world record holder arrived in Korea with big expectations, and man, did he deliver. As we watch his three blind finals results, Tommy not only won golden clock, not only got first in three blind, but broke the world record meme in finals of the largest competition ever. 1407, 1398, 1439 gives a 1415 yes. WR oh meme, God. knocking off over half a second from the previous world record. The greatest competitors show up in the toughest of situations, and if there were ever any doubts, Tommy has dashed them all. At number 3, we had a thoroughly thrilling Nations Cup, with some surprise upsets and all-around high-quality solving. The 5-12 matchup proved to be deadly for Poland 1, as an early timer start led to a surprise victory for Canada 1 to advance into the final 8 teams. The defending champions, Germany 1, fell to the United States' third place team in the round of 16 also. The final 4 consisted of USA 1 and 2, as well as Philippines 1 and China 1, but much to everyone's surprise, USA 1, the favorite to win the event, fell to Philippines 1 in the semis and couldn't hold on against USA 2 in the bronze place match, dropping them to an unexpected 4th place finish. While the Filipino team fought hard in the finals, China 1 ended up winning by a comfortable margin and claiming the Nations Cup title. China 1 are your winners of Nations Cup, they've taken it out! With Worlds being such a massive competition, we wanted to take some time out to give a shout out to all the podium winners with a medal count. Out of 63 participating nations, 17 grabbed at least one medal. That'd be Singapore, the Philippines, Switzerland, Vietnam, Ireland, France, India, Sweden, and New Zealand. They all got one medal each, while Australia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Argentina, and South Korea each had two. The top three spots went to China with five medals, Poland with eight medals, and the US earned the most medals out of any country with eight golds, four silvers, and six bronzes, totaling to 20. We're also going to take this time to give a quick shout out to WRs that we haven't mentioned yet. That being Hill Pong's awesome 5 blind WR single and Max's 6x6 WR single from day one. And also, 19 continental records were broken at Worlds. The results definitely lived up to expectations, but we still have one more highlight. The 3x3 finals was an absolute treat to watch live. And here's the situation going to the final five solvers who all got sub six averages in the previous round. Luke Garrett had put his name in the hat early with a 582 average, which would have won Worlds 2019 by almost a whole second, by the way. Max then came in as the fifth seed and strung together consistent low five solves with a 454 for good measures. His efforts clocked him in at a 531 average, knocking Luke off and cementing himself as the man to beat with four solvers left. Timon was part of the penultimate pairing and got off to a bit of a rough start with an uncharacteristic 661 on solve 1, but if you thought he was out for the count, you could not be more wrong. Timon led a fierce comeback with 476, 500, and 454 second solves, meaning he just needed a 617 solve on solve 5 to outpace Max. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to capitalize and had to settle for 542, putting him in second place for now. While Max was guaranteed to make the podium now, both Rehang and Yihang were gunning for the first place spot. Rehang had some incredibly consistent solving but sadly didn't get enough standout solves to make it on the podium. Yihang started off similarly to Timon with a rare 6 10 second solve, but he too made a huge charge, popping off a 472, 461, and 515. He was set up even better than Timon for his final solve, needing just a 606 to win Worlds 2023. Four years since the last championships comes down to this final solve. Who would prevail, Max or Yihang? Worst possible average will still get him at least second. 
Eprim? No! Max Park is your world champion! What? What? Yi Hang Wang's lost it! The final margin, 0.01 seconds. You can't make this stuff up. While it's a bit unfortunate for Yi Hang, something tells us we're not quite done seeing him in big moments. And it's all sunny side up for Max, claiming his world champion title from 2017 and delivering retribution after missing the podium four years ago. Phew, what a finale to end four years of anticipation. It's pretty safe to say that this world's fully delivered on the results front, and a big shout out goes to the competition team and staff. Congrats to all the medalists and everyone who qualified and competed at Rubik's WCA World Championships 2023. Worlds only comes around once every two years, so we'll have to wait until 2025 in Seattle for Max to defend his title. If you enjoyed these highlights, consider giving us a like or subscribe, and check out the rest of the Cubers Live channel. Even though Worlds might be over, Cubers Live will continue to livestream comps and keep you up to date with all the happenings in the world of speedcubing. Records are broken all the time, so we hope you'll join us. If you made it this far, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next Speedcubing Top 10.